Over the last few years, coal mining jobs in eastern Kentucky have vanished at an astounding rate. In 2013 alone, a quarter of all coal mining jobs disappeared from eastern Kentucky as EPA rules and changes in fuel production forced America to turn from coal to natural gas to produce electricity. But it's not just coal miners who've lost their jobs. People working at restaurants, trucking companies, and convenience stores are out of work, and thousands more jobs are threatened. The worst is yet to come, as EPA rules will soon force many coal power plants into retirement. And new EPA greenhouse gas rules are coming that will significantly increase electric bills. According to Kentucky's Secretary of Energy, the greatest burden in the nation will fall on the people of Kentucky and the businesses that remain. This isn't about the politics of climate change. It's about the people and the businesses at the end of the power lines. People who will pay higher electric bills because of EPA's regulations. People often forgotten by Washington, D.C. Used to, 60% of our business came from coal miners. They would come in, they would get their gas, their lunch, everything they needed, spending anywhere from $20 to $30 per day. On an average day, we would have around 200 miners that stopped in. Now, in this past year, we have around 15 miners that stopped during the day. We've never struggled to pay bills, never. And the past year, I struggle each and every month, each week, to try to get my bills paid just to keep the doors open. I wish the people that has done this to the coal business would realize how bad they have really hurt this community and the surrounding communities because that's where most of the money in this town came from. And when you take away the coal business, you took away from every business in this town. It's been definitely been a financial struggle. Uh, you're used to a weekly payday, and then it goes uh, getting signed on unemployment and things. Uh, it makes it difficult to pay the bills. I mean, I've got many, many guys. It's buddies, friends, neighbors. It's all suffering. The area is already stricken. I mean, only jobs we had was the coal. It's devastating. You have to start over, and I'm 59 year old. I don't know where it's gonna to come to. How can you heat homes by the thousands with no money? Uh, it's got to come from somewhere. We have to be employed, we have to pay taxes and uh, in order to make it work. I'm very worried about the future. It comes to every month that you're worried, are you gonna be able to stay open the next month? Because the money is just not coming in to pay the bills. You can come in here about the first 10 days of every month. We're pretty busy. But the last two weeks of the month, our business is down, I would say, at least 40% from the first two weeks of the month, just because they don't have any money left. You see it more and more every day, people counting out change just to buy two and three dollars worth of gas. But that's not even a gallon of gas. We're really struggling. I had the Garrett Furniture Company, which was one of the largest companies in this part of the country here, and I also had Big Peach Pawn Shop at the same time. And when the coal business died and the money died here, they died too, like every other business. Go downtown and look. Our whole downtown Manchester is dead. It's a bank and a city police department. I remember at one time up to 30 businesses in that area. In the last 20 years, I'd say we've lost 500 businesses. This month alone, my electric and gas bill was over $500. I have five children and a wife, and I draw a VA check. How do you expect me to live on that? I mean, what can I do? There's nothing I can do after my business has died. I went to work in the mines. The businesses are hurting, the people are hurting, and it ain't gonna get no better. If there's a light at the end of the tunnel, it's very dim, very dim. 
Jails are packed full here in Clay County. Packed full, they're asking the judges to release people because they don't have room for them. I was up at the courthouse the other day, the first 23 cases called, you know what they were? Shoplifting. I used to work in the courthouse. We never had a shoplifter a month, sometimes six months. The other morning, the first 23 cases called were shoplifters. Why? Why? They had to steal. They couldn't afford to buy it. And you just look at those kids and you just wonder what's in store for them. It's, it's sad. Very sad. Because I don't know how they're going to survive when we can't pay them bills. How is RECC going to survive when nobody in Clay County pays electric bills? A lot of times, if I'm working out front, they'll say, Susan, can I speak to you in your office? And then they'll come in and they'll shut the door because they don't want nobody to feel sorry for them. They don't want our pity. They just want help to make it through. And it breaks my heart. I can't help it. It breaks my heart. I've watched my daddy work his whole life and, you know, and work on strip jobs and work with co and then come down and not have no big income no more. So I know what that's like from a personal basis. So I treat them and I tell them there's no need to be ashamed. We all have to do this at some point in time and let's pray that things get better. Jackson Energy has is, is been good, you know, over the years. Uh, they'll let you make a partial payment. It hurts to have to ask. They can make a payment arrangement in which they agree to pay on a certain day. We have what we call levelized billing. That gives the customer an idea of what their bill is gonna be. We'll get a 12 month average. Instead of having $600 electric bills in the winter, they could have $300 electric bills. Prepay is an outstanding program. A new customer don't have to pay a deposit. Nobody has to pay a deposit. It's $25 membership fee, $100 credit on, on their in-home display box. They can have electric. We have um, four energy auditors. They will come into your home. They will do an air pressure test. It tells the customer where their energy's going, why they're using so much, and then they give them ways to fix that. We estimate that one in five of our members live in a mobile home. And in, in a lot of service areas, uh, that's gonna be much higher than that. Probably 40 to 50% of our membership lives in a mobile home. Manufactured housing typically gets an electric furnace. Members usually choose the inefficient electric furnace because of the cheap upfront cost. It's an additional thousand to fifteen hundred dollars to put a heat pump in. It ends up leaving a lot of folks with a seven hundred, eight hundred dollar bill in the wintertime. We have people who are on fixed incomes that have trouble. You know, we see all types of people, you know, and we treat them all the same and we try to help them all the same. We can improve the efficiency of a home if things are accessible. We can seal, reseal the duct leaks that are prevalent in a lot of homes. We can repair that underbelly at that point and re-insulate the bottom of the house. But the most common thing I see that improves the efficiency in these homes is to do a lot of air sealing. That helps keep the home more comfortable and keep that electric furnace from running as much. The folks from Cumberland Valley have come in and recommended some more efficient lighting for us. It does a tremendous job of keeping our uh, operations lit so our folks can see what they're doing and that they're doing it properly. There's been some incentives that have been afforded to us for uh, investment in this lighting. We've gotten some money back, plus we get some uh, lower cost. It's been a big help and it continues to be a help and it will continue to be a help because once you make that investment, it continues to, to reap benefits. The way that the folks at Cumberland Valley help us identify areas that we can reduce costs has helped us retain people, or in some cases, employ people that we might not be able to afford to do uh, otherwise. We as a manufacturing community at large, both those of us who are in this particular business as well as any kind of other manufacturing business, struggles to be competitive. Any additional cost for things like utilities 
just puts us in a situation where we will be even less competitive with the rest of the world. I, for one, don't believe we can afford to do that. I think we see more businesses close. I think we see uh, more folks being unemployed or certainly underemployed. We already have a lot of people out there who uh, don't have a lot of hope. And unfortunately, I think this would just uh, make that, what little hope they may have, go to zero. We're a dust bowl. My children right now, I'm raising every one of them to try to get them in college as quick as I can and get them out of here. Because if they stay here, they're gonna die with a county and a city. Roller rink's gone, walk-in theater's gone, drive-in theater's gone, Henny penny we used to circle as boys and girls and play and fight and love and marry all night long. It's gone, and when I've been, it's went broke. I am very concerned, as is Jackson Energy, because we see our customers having problems now. If regulations are, are put in place, bills are gonna go higher, well, who's gonna pay for that? The customer is. It'll be back like it was in the Depression. Uh, in my opinion, uh, you'll either raise it, grow it, or or you won't have it. I'd rather work. I want to work, but I don't know. It's it's a beautiful area to to just let go down to nothing. It's hard right now, but when it gets harder, priorities are going to be: well, Do I buy my medicine? Do I buy food for my children? Or do I pay my electric bill? We're dying and nobody cares. These people that have been the backbone of this country, two tours in Vietnam, three tours in Vietnam, First World War, Second World War, <clears throat> my daddy Korea, my grandpa World War II, me Vietnam, one right after the other. Now I have a wife and five children and nothing, nothing. And how are we gonna get it back?